Hey, welcome back. So, if you didn't know, Mr. Newbold has a class pet. Oh, look. It's Nemo, the hermit crab. Woo! Yeah, class pet, Nemo. Woo! Yeah. It's not Simba, it's a hermit crab to my line. Thanks for being here, you guys, to watch our video. Just gonna feed him an apple there. Apple time! There we go. <laughs> okay, thanks for your patience. Here we go. So, finishing off our practice test. So we just worked with uh, factoring and solving quadratic through factoring. And now we're going to do solving absolute values, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So don't forget, you do have to get everything, excuse me, whoa, get everything to the other side first. Get everything to the other side. For like solving absolute values, for solving absolute values, and for solving radicals, get everything to the other side first, right? Isolate, isolate the radical at number eight, or isolate the absolute value, get all the absolute value by itself um, first. So for example, number seven, we're going to want to minus seven to the other side first, so we get an eight. And then bring down the x minus 4. And so now we're going to get our Luke Skywalker lightsaber out. And write x minus 4 equals 8. And then another special guest. Luke, I am your father. No! We're going to go ahead and write. X minus 4 equals 8. But this time, right, this time with the second equation, remember how Anakin Skywalker was so friendly as a little boy and so nice and he was doing all his, his pod racing. And so then it became negative and scary and don't choke me with your chokehold. That's it. So we changed, we changed the sign, remember? Don't forget, we changed the sign for the second, for the second equation. And that'll give us our two answers. So we're going to add 4 to this side. So then we can get x equals negative 4 as one of our solutions. And then we're going to also add 4 to this side. And uh, instead of the negative 4, we're actually going to get a 12. And you can definitely and should plug it back in to make sure it works. Because 12 minus 4 is 8, and that certainly works. And then also, if you plug in a negative 4, negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8, and the absolute value of negative 8 is positive 8. So it's about to work. Nice. This one, you're just going to square both sides. Square both sides, remember? Hey, you're supposed to be doing this on your own. Are you doing this on your own? Right? Make sure you do this on your own. And then check with the video. I'm waiting for you to do number 8, number 9 by yourself. And then push play and watch and see how it did, see if you got it right. Okay, squaring both sides get rid of the radical. So we're left with x squared equals negative 2x plus 15. And then we want to get everything on the same side and factor it. So we're going to add 2x to this side. So we get x squared plus 2x um, equals 15. And then we're going to minus 15 to this side. So now we have 0 on this side. We have x squared plus 2x minus 15 on this side. And we're going to factor it. x and x. What are factors of 15? Come on. Say it louder. That's right. 3 times 5 is 15. Nice. And then we want a... Uh, ooh, do you remember? The sign the middle term goes with the... Sign the middle term goes with the middle term, sign of, goes with a bigger number. And then we decide, are we trying to do a positive times a positive is a positive? 
Or is it positive times a negative? It is positive times a negative. Okay, so those are our two answers. But we have to set both equal to zero and see if they both work or check if they're extraneous. So we're going to do x minus 3 is equal to 0. And we're going to do x plus 5 equal to 0. And when you do that, and minus 5 to the other side, you do get x equals negative 5. And we add 3 to the other side, and get x equals 3. So I'm pretty sure that the 3 is going to work, but I'm a little suspicious. I'm a little suspicious. Got a new chance. We're getting along together with suspicious minds. What the hell this? Left the building. So we're going to go back to the original and check our answer. And so if you plug in a 3, and then we do 3 times negative 2 is on negative 6. And then 15 minus 6 is 9. And the square root of 9 equals 3, it works. Definitely, definitely, definitely works. Right? It works. But I'm not sure about the negative. The reason why is the square root will never yield the negative number. So I'm a little bit worried about plugging in a negative 5 now. Because if you plug in a negative 5 here, negative 5 times negative 2 is 10. 10 plus 5 is uh, 10 plus 15 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. But that does not equal the original negative 5 that we plugged in. No. Extraneous. Extraneous is extraneous. What does extraneous mean? Extraneous means that it doesn't work. The solution that doesn't work. So only x equals 3 works. Only choose that option for number 8. So be careful of those on the test. Be careful. Number 9, to find out what the slope is, you do have to put it into slope intercept form. Y equals mx plus b, right? And so how we do that is we like add 9y to the other side like that. But you gotta solve for y, get y by itself. And then we'll minus 18 over to this side. So we get 3x minus 18 is equal to 9y. And then we're gonna actually rewrite it the other way now. So we have 9y is equal to 3x minus 18. Same thing. All we did was uh, switch that the 9y was on the left instead of the right, and the 3x minus 18 was on the left instead of the right. Right, so left. Anyways. Okay, so we're going to get y by itself still, so we're going to divide by 9. Divide by 9, those cancel out. Divide by 9, divide by 9. Nice. And then that reduces, and you need to reduce it. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And then 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we get a slope of 1 third. Nice. 1 third. And then 18, negative 18 divided by 9 is negative 2. And that's the y-intercept. Nice, nice. Now this one looks a little tricky. That's a 0. That's a negative 2. So this must be a negative, this must be a negative 1. And so is it y or is it x? Which one is it that equals negative 1? Well, if you have a graph and calculator, like I know you should, um, then you could go ahead and plug it into the calculator. And if you type in a negative 1, you'll clearly see that that's wrong. Because that would be down here. So that must be x. So that's x equals negative 1, not y. And so it could be x again for the test, or it could be y for the test. One of those on the test, though. One of those on the test. Yeah, number 11, what's the domain range of the following equation? Well, that's going to be a right. Remember, it's opposite what you think. So it's right 5 down 2. And did you guys know that that's actually the domain range? Wait, that's not right 5, we both. Oh, sorry. Yeah, remember, it's opposite what you think. So it's actually left 5. Sorry, sorry. So it's left 5, and so negative 5 and down 2. Did you actually know that's the x and y value for the starting point of our graph? From the equation, that's our starting point. We'll need that for a problem later on. And so then, that's going to be left 5 down 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down 2. Good. So that's 
our starting point. And then we're going to go over one, up one, because the slope is just one. So over one, up one, and over one, two, three, four. Square root of four is two. And so there is our graph, starting here, going over one, up one, and then over four, up two. Nice. They didn't ask for the graph, that's what we're doing the range. Oh, yeah. So it's not negative infinity, positive infinity, but it is negative 5 is the domain. That's the x value, right? That's the x value. That's negative 5 to infinity, right? So that's the domain. Negative 5 to infinity. And then the range is the y value. And so the y value, the y value is actually going to be right here where the graph starts, up there to the right. Um, so the y value is going to be down here at negative 2. Oh, that's just this y value. That's the range. That's the range. Because then we go negative 2. It's slowly going upwards, slowly. So negative 2 to infinity. I hope you got that right on your own. And then you paused me. Try the next one on your own then. Fine. Woo! You try it on your own. Okay, you know, our vertex is just from these values, you guys. That's the opposite sign, so negative 1. And then this is just what it looks like, positive 3. So that means we go left 1 and down 3. There's our vertex. And since this is absolute value, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, wait a second, there's a slope there. And so our slope is that number 2 over any whole number. And any whole number can be written over the number 1. So we go up two, and we go over one. So from our vertex, we go up two, over one, up two, over one. And so that's our absolute value, a little bit narrower. We go up two, over one, up two, over one. Nice. So then the domain, you guys, the domain is just negative infinity, positive infinity. Because the graph is technically going this way forever and this way forever, to the left and to the right. But the range is the tricky part. Remember how to do the range? So am I on the graph? Whoop, whoop. Am I on the graph yet? Am I on the graph yet? No, no, no. Yes. Okay, great. Well, what's that y value right there? Because that's the start of my range. That's the start of my range. That's to do it in orange. So that's the start of my range. Well, that's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So negative 3 is the start of my range. And then it just goes upwards to infinity, right? Upwards to infinity. The graph goes upwards. So that's going to be negative 3 to infinity. Woo! Negative 3 to infinity. There we go. Nice. The sound working better? Sorry, I had it down too low. My arm got tired of holding the microphone. But we're back. Okay, I think we need to do another video. What do you think? Are we already there? Eh, we got to do one more. Okay, roots. So to find the roots, you do have to factor it. So we get x and x, 1 and 3. I think I've seen this one before. And then the sign of the middle term goes with the bigger number. And then we also want to get a positive, so we get a positive, it needs to be negative times negative is a positive. And then we say each of those equal to zero, and we get roots at one and positive three. Because you know, remember you take it, set it equal to zero, and then you solve for x by adding three to the other side. This equals three. Okay, so that's your nuts here. So where do you think the vertex is, huh? Well, you could use the formula for the vertex which is x equals negative v over 2a, certainly. But also, you can see it. It's in between the two x-intercepts at 1. Let's see if we're right. If our b value is negative 4, and our a value is 1, let's plug into our formula. Negative, negative 4. Because the formula is negative, and then, but they're not negative 4. The formula is negative, and then the 4 is negative. And then all over 2 times a, where a is 1. And so we are going to get uh, positive 4 over 2. What the? What the? Oh, wait. What, what, what's going on? What, 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 three, one, over here? Um, so let me try that again. So the b value is negative 4. Good. So that's negative, negative 4. 
And then the a value is just a 1. Good. Well, that's weird because 4 divided by 2 is 2. And, oh, I graphed it wrong. Oopsie. So it's supposed to be x equals 1 and 3. Ah. And so that's here and that's here. Sorry, I'm tired. So I just go, sorry. And then the vertex is not 1. The vertex should be 2. Oh, oh, and there it is. See, good thing we use the formula. Yeah, maybe so you don't make a mistake when you're tired. Use the formula, right? Use the force in a positive, not evil way. So use the formula. What? That's not the formula. Oh, it's negative b over 2a. Good. Use that formula. Okay. Now we still need the y value, right? The vertex. We do have the x value. The vertex is going to be over 2. But what's the y value? Well, you take that 2 and you plug it back in. So you're going to go ahead and plug it back in here and plug it back in there. So we get y equals 2, all squared, instead of x squared, it's all 2 squared, minus 4 times 2, plus 3, and 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is negative 8, plus 3, and so then, let's see, that's 7 minus 8, which is a negative 1. So we get a vertex out of negative 1, and there's our answer. Again, here's our parabola. And that's going to be uh, at over 2. We're going to graph that vertex now. So over 2, down 1. And then we're also going to go over 2 and up 1, 2, 3, 4. Because the square um, of 2 squared, right? Two, 2 squared is 4. So we go over 2, up 4, like that. There's our problem. And then again, over 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. And so now, what's the domain? Well, left forever and right forever. And so we get negative infinity to positive infinity. But what's the domain? No, no, that's the domain. What's the range? So then we draw our line for range. Remember? And we're going down to up. Are we on the graph yet? Are we there yet? Mom, are we there yet? Dad, are we there yet? This ride is taking so long to get there. Here it is. What's that number? Well, that is at negative what? That's at, oh, it's kind of a big writing there. So that's at negative 1. Y, y equals negative 1. And so negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, forever, infinity. So our range then is negative 1 to infinity. Woo! We got it. It's the main range. We're finally understanding it. So watch my next video. Watch my next video. 4 o'clock and we'll go home. One more video. Peace out. Bye for now. Woo! Yeah. Remember, be nice to hermit crabs. That's our pet, our class pet. Bye for now. Peace out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah.